Viruses are weird. They do weird things. They invade the cell and they cause the cell to do weird things. And that's why they're a problem, okay? They trigger so much inflammation that we end up having just a negative effect from the inflammation more so than the virus. Well, the ketogenic diet has been shown to modulate inflammation. So when you look at it just embryonically, it looks like the ketogenic diet would be great for a virus, right? It'd be great to help combat a virus. Not necessarily, we have to look at the big picture. So fair warning, this video is going to get a little bit scientifically dense. So if it's not for you, I totally understand. But those of you that really want the science, know how your body works, stick with me through the entirety because we're gonna have some fun with this one. Please do hit that red subscribe button if you like science and if you like daily videos. And then also hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a beat. And then after this video, check out my special pricing on Chomps. Okay, there's a grass-fed, grass-finished beef sticks. Super awesome product that I talk about on my channel all the time and I've probably never heard a negative thing about. So anyhow, highly recommend that you check them out. They're a big supporter of this channel and something that you can get your hands on even when inventory is scarce with a lot of things. So highly recommend you check them out after you learn what you learn with this video. Okay, so when we look at the ketogenic diet, one of the big benefits of the ketogenic diet is how it modulates something called the NLRP3 inflammasome. The NLRP3 inflammasome is sort of a modulator of inflammation within the body as regards to interleukin-1 and interleukin-1-8. What that means in human terms is that NLRP3 inflammasome helps promote sort of the acute phase response of the immune system. And that is when a virus enters your body, NLRP3 inflammasome allows for the rapid production of T cells and the rapid production of immune cells to be able to fight something. So NLRP3 inflammasome is good and bad at the same time. It's bad if it's chronically elevated, but it's good if it's elevated at the right time. Well, here's the thing. We have to look at how it actually works because it's quite fascinating. When a virus enters your body and the NLRP3 inflammasome triggers the massive production of T cells and other immune cells, it wages kind of a war, a war on our body, and that's why we feel kind of sick, why we get inflammation. But here's what's going on at a very fine level. T cells are the cells that would normally go and neutralize a threat very specifically. They are very specific. They're like a sniper. They can just hone in and neutralize the threat. But they take a long time to get set to get their weaponry, to be able to find aim, to be able to finally neutralize the threat. So in the meantime, you need to have troops that can move in really fast and make sure the threat doesn't become too big. So visualize this, an invader comes into your country, okay? Well, you need to neutralize the invader that's coming into your country. But in order to do that, you need to have targeted ability to neutralize them. Well, it takes time to get that targeted ability to neutralize. So in the meantime, you send out the troops, the bombardiers, you you blow them up. Well, that's great for a little bit until the sniper has a chance. But in the meantime, you just caused a bunch of chaos, right? You just caused a bunch of chaos. That's exactly what's happening when a virus enters your body. It's like the first phase response is and all of a sudden you're like, that's why the flu hits you and all of a sudden you're like, what? I was fine two seconds ago and now I'm sick because boom, it just hits you like a lead balloon. And then the laser targeting starts coming into the equation. Well, if the NLRP3 inflammasome is reduced, then obviously this doesn't have as much of an effect. And here's where interesting science comes in. There's some science that has shown that in mice, if they had the flu and they stopped the NLRP3 inflammasome at the very beginning of the flu, it increased their mortality rates. But if they stopped the NLRP3 inflammasome at the peak of the flu, not at the beginning, it increased their survival rate. So what that means is we don't wanna have the NLRP3 be low at the beginning. We actually want that to be elevated. We want a big, quick airstrike, and then we want the ability of the T cells to neutralize the threat. If we crush that too much, then the flu virus or the virus in general has the ability to just replicate and invade cells, right? So that's what makes it very, very unique. So now you're thinking, okay, I don't wanna do the ketogenic diet. This doesn't sound good because I'm neutralizing or I'm stopping NLRP3. Well, here's the thing though. Most of the science in the ketogenic world surrounding the NLRP3 inflammasome has to do with the hippocampal region of the brain. It's mainly looking at neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, things like that. So it's not necessarily comparing apples to apples. Just because it's controlling and modulating inflammation in the brain doesn't necessarily mean it has that same effect at the immune level, but let's pretend for a second that maybe it does. If the ketogenic diet dampens NLRP3, therefore dampening the immune system, it may not be good right when you first get 
a virus or get the flu. But the modulation of the NLRP3 inflammasome later on is really good. You get what I'm saying? So the ketogenic diet is actually really good for fighting a virus later on. It's just not good at the very acute phase. Now I have a lot more to say here, but one of the quick workarounds that I've hypothesized is perhaps if you're doing a ketogenic diet and you feel you instantly got sick, then maybe you might wanna stop the ketogenic diet for a couple of days and then go back into it. But I have more to say. Our bodies are more equipped than that, right? So if the ketogenic diet is coming into effect when we're starving, our bodies wouldn't be very adaptive if we didn't have an ability to also fight infections when we're starving, right? How would our ancestors have ever lived through any kind of like virus? Well, that's where another thing comes in play. Something called gamma delta T cells. Gamma delta T cells are another immune response and they're really cool. Their job is normally to prevent tumors. Okay, and the ketogenic diet massively increases gamma delta T cell levels within the body. So it turns out that these gamma delta T cells are an ability for your body to fight infection when you're in a calorie deprived or starvation state. What do you know? Well, these gamma delta T cells are lethal. They have the ability to kill the cell that a virus invades. You see, viruses cannot replicate or multiply unless they have gone into a cell. Okay, they invade that cell and then they bind to the RNA, DNA, and they actually replicate. That's what makes them scary, to be completely honest. So you have no choice but to actually kill the cell. That's a big process. And it turns out the gamma delta T cells can laser target the cells that have been infected by a virus and shoot them down. What this looks like, big picture, is you have the quelling of inflammation, meaning you have the quelling of the cytokine storm coming from the NLRP3 inflammasome. So the overabundance of inflammation that occurs with a virus is quelled by keto, but then you have an increase in gamma delta T cell activity, which helps neutralize the influenza or virus right at the beginning. So you actually end up slightly better off with the ketogenic diet and finding a virus, at least based upon some of the research that I've been looking at. Now there's one other metabolic piece that's really interesting, and this one is clear as day, okay? De novo lipogenesis is where your body is taking extra carbohydrates or fructose and converting it into fats. It's a normal process, but it's a lame process and it causes you to generally get fat. Okay, well, it turns out that viruses like to feed off of de novo lipogenesis. They feed off of that process. So for instance, it looks like this. When your body is taking carbs and turning it into fat, viruses come in and say, thank you, and they steal the fat. Okay, and they steal that fat to build their phospholipid membrane and actually grow themselves and protect themselves. So when you're eating carbs, in essence, or eating fructose specifically, in essence, you could be feeding a virus. So the ketogenic diet, just simply by nature, by its absence of fructose and absence of carbohydrates, you at least lessen the level of de novo lipogenesis and potentially lessen how you're feeding that phospholipid membrane or phospholipid bilayer of a virus. So that's kind of an indirect way. So between the metabolic avenue where you're actually physically not feeding a virus anymore, through the modulation of the NLRP3 inflammasome for the cytokine storm modulation later on, and then the gamma delta T cell activity for the basically apoptosis or killing of the cells that have been infected by a virus, the ketogenic diet could actually be very, very powerful. If you feel yourself getting sick, break keto for a couple days and then go back to it. Anyhow, I know it was dense, see you tomorrow.